Hey guys, hope you're having a great day. Welcome to the finale of What If Kratos Entered the Dragon Ball Z World. And if you haven't already, please check out parts 1 and 2. They are up on my page. And we last left off with the Tournament of Power being announced. And of course, Kratos is going to fight. Because the way that he's been welcomed by these people, he's never experienced anything like this. And this time, the roster will include Goten and Trunks as well. Because Kratos is not going to lie to them. He will personally oversee Goten, Trunks, and Atreus' training for this. Universe 7 has a brand new all-star team, and it's all because of Kratos. The new Universe 7 team is Goku, Vegeta, Kratos, Atreus, Goten, Trunks, Krillin, Androids 18 and 17. Goku also asks Gohan to join. And with Kratos being who he is, as soon as the tournament was announced, he gathered his team and they began to train in the hyperbolic time chamber. Goku, Vegeta, and Kratos volunteer for the Zeno Expo. Everybody's going to continue their training under the tutelage of Mimir and Master Roshi. Mimir has picked up a lot of things, especially when it comes to training techniques. Now, of course, Vegeta, Kratos, and Goku are going to watch the Zeno Expo. And Kratos tells them not to hold back. They don't want to be targets at this tournament. They want to be feared. When they return, they have a few hours until the tournament begins. Everybody's power level has skyrocketed, and Atreus has actually even learned something new. A new technique unique to him. Universe 7 is readier than they've ever been, so when it comes time to depart, there is no delay. When they arrive, Jiren and Kratos immediately lock eyes. Their key kind of resonates with each other's. Kaba is really excited to see Atreus, and Atreus introduces him to both Goten and Trunks. The Grand Priest arrives and he explains the rules to everybody. The tournament begins and Kratos has Universe 7 jump to the middle and form a phalanx formation. With their backs against the time ticker, their opponents must face them head on. Now of course, this doesn't go according to plan, because Goku, Vegeta, and Seventeen all run off on their own. Goten and Trunks also run off, and Atreus wants to join them, but Kratos tells him no. Atreus tells his father that his friends need him. Kratos lets him go on, but he's disappointed in his team's lack of discipline. Kratos, Gohan, and Krillin remain together. Android 18 also runs off on their own. Goten and Trunks begin to pick a fight with Universe 4, and with their new forms, they're very excited. Because yeah, the kids have God Key, and not only that, they have Super Saiyan Blue. And with Adreus' new transformation of being able to turn into a giant bear, Universe 4 never stood a chance. Goku and Vegeta easily take out Universe 9. Universe 10 decides to jump Kratos, deeming him the leader of this team. But with Krillin Gohan having his back, Kratos singles out Abni. Who has his amazing key displacing technique, but Kratos has been fighting warriors without sensing key for a long time. This technique is nothing new to him. He was born in the darkness, molded by it. Kratos easily knocks out their best warrior. The rest of their universe falls shortly after. And the Zenos are really excited to see Kratos fight, but it still seems like he's holding a lot back. But he unveils a little of it when Kale goes berserk, because Kratos is the one to stop her. And unlike Jiren, he finishes her by throwing her out of the ring. Jiren has noticed Kratos, and Kratos realizes the two of them are about to fight. Jiren and Kratos begin to size each other up, and this time it's actually Jiren who throws the first strike. Kratos just eats it, staring back at Jiren, and the two begin their fight. Kratos' durability is off the charts. Jiren didn't expect to go this hard this early in the tournament. Kratos actually has the upper hand until Jiren starts unleashing more and more of his power. Kratos begins to go on the defense and he gets pushed back more and more until suddenly he's on the edge of the ring. Kratos is about to be knocked out when suddenly a giant bear attacks Jiren. Atreus has found a way to keep his Spartan rage boost while also transforming. This catches Jiren off guard and Kratos is able to escape his fate. This is when Goku and Vegeta step in, and Kratos' training about teamwork has actually rubbed off on them. The Saiyans in sync begin powering up to their max forms, Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken x 20, and Super Saiyan Blue Evolution. And now while the two Saiyans fight Jiren, Universe 4 decides it's time to attack Kratos and Atreus, hoping to knock them out while they're off guard. But the father and son synergy is off the charts, they're actually able to hold off their entire universe, Goten, Trunks, Gohan, and Krillin arrive to help the two. They eliminate the universe by fighting as one. Out of desperation, Universe 3 creates their giant robot. Now this isn't the first Titan that Kratos has fought. With his leadership, Universe 7 is able to prevail, realizing fairly quickly that the android's head is its weak spot. Reminds him of a giant Cyclops he once fought. 
Now the only universes remaining are universes 2, 6, and 11. The rest of universe 11 is backing up Jiren against his fight with Goku and Vegeta. But Kratos and the rest of universe 7 step in, so now it's going to be universe 7 versus 11. Most of universe 11 falls fairly easily until it's just Dispo, Top, and Jiren. Goten and Trunks are having a blast, and they actually see Dispo as the weakest member of Universe 11, charging at him. But Dispo is an experienced warrior. He actually tricks the boys, causing them to fall to their demise. Atreus is rattled, but Kratos tells him to focus. Goten and Trunks are yelling from the stands for Atreus to avenge them. Kratos tells his son that his opponent's speed doesn't matter, that he must stay prepared, and that he must trust his instincts. Kratos flashes back to Hermes. Gohan and Atreus begin to battle Dispo, and Gohan is actually able to grab a hold of him. Atreus shifts into his Spartan Rage bear form, and just as he's about to knock Dispo out, Dispo escapes. Activating his super light speed mode, he decides to blitz Atreus. Atreus trusts his instincts, and he's able to dodge Dispo's attack, which causes Dispo to fall off balance, and this allows for Gohan to take him out. And since Frieza is not there to trigger Topo into becoming a god of destruction, Kratos knocks him out. Jiren, after being the only member standing of Universe 11, decides to go all out. And he's able to take out one of Universe 7's warriors. And now it's Jiren versus Goku, Vegeta, Kratos, Atreus, Android 17, 18, and Gohan. But without Goku's Ultra Instinct boost, it is going to be much harder for Universe 7 than they think. Jiren is a monster. He's actually holding off their entire team. It seems like a stalemate until he finally gets the edge on one of their more inexperienced members. Jiren knocks out Atreus. This causes something to snap inside of Kratos. His Spartan rage has never been higher and between him, Goku and Vegeta, they're actually able to knock Jiren out of the ring. And after Universe 11 falls, Universe 7 takes care of Universe 6 and 2 leading them to win the Tournament of Power. Once again, plot armor, and Kratos is voted the MVP and he's given the Super Dragon Balls. He wishes for all the universes to be restored in peace. And that's what I think would happen if Kratos entered the Dragon Ball Z world. Man, this scenario was so much fun to write and animate. I really hope you guys had as much fun with this as I did, but please let me know what you thought in the comments below and don't forget to hit subscribe for more. Peace. I'm currently working on a what if Goku was in Mortal Kombat scenario. Please let me know if you want to see that or if you want to see more Dragon Ball specific what ifs. Scenarios like what if Vegeta and Nappa came down with Raditz to recruit Goku. Peace.